Hello. Hello, hello. This is Ryan Folland. All I have to say is, what the tech? And I've spent the last 20 minutes trying to figure out how to go live, but I keep trying. And that is just like, the more you try, the better off you will get. So I'm here today to support you. Looks like we're building an audience as we speak. And I apologize for everybody that came on uh, a little bit earlier and I wasn't on. But hey, I'm here. And I've got my selfie stick. And I'm at UCI. And there we go, the first viewer. So my name is Ryan Folland. If you haven't met me or seen me, my name is Ryan Folland. You can find out more information at ryanfolland.com. And uh, hey, yes, hey, Youngry, what's up? I think I can like and like. So the funny thing is that uh, the funny thing is I signed off my personal Facebook for the entire year and I just feel Facebook is distracting and I don't really like it as a platform sorry I'm more of a Twitter guy but just for you Ash I got my ass onto uh, my personal Facebook which I said I wouldn't do so technically this is just a temporary visit so that I can publish this onto Youngry but uh, the idea here is to talk with you uh, and have you go into my brain, ask me any questions you want about communication. I mean, I can sit here and ramble off about communication for a long time, but uh, the idea here is to interact. So we've got two people, and uh, feel free to chirp in, type in there. Uh, Ash Coomer just shared my video. Very cool. So I believe that public speaking is probably the most feared element that everyone has. And when I ask people in front of a large group and I say, hey, who here is a public speaker? Most people do not identify themselves as a public speaker. But guess what? If you open your mouth in public, you are a public speaker. So the more empowered you can be by identifying that that is you, you can practice and go forward. All right, uh, let's see. I've actually wanted to be doing that. How do you build your personal brand while not on Facebook? Easy. Check out my Twitter profile, at Ryan Folland. I've got close to... I don't know, 180,000 followers, which is way more than three or 400 that I have on Facebook. Building the brand isn't about being on a social media platform. Building a brand is about figuring out what you want to be seen as in the world, okay? Let's see another question. What is your take on Snapchat versus Instagram or Twitter Live? Okay, let me go back to the first. Building your brand is totally doable without being active on Facebook. It's important to have a Facebook page to be found and so I've got a public profile page. Now I'll post outwardly on my public profile, but I'm not diving in on my personal account and liking things and looking at babies. For me, that's just distracting. So for me, Twitter is a platform where I communicate. Uh, and I like Instagram as well, but Facebook for me on a personal level, not so good. It's just because it's not really for me and that's okay. You don't have to be on all platforms. All right, question, what is your take on Snapchat versus Instagram or Twitter Live? I had Snapchat, I tried it, I enjoyed it, and then I got rid of it. So I don't really care <laughs> about a platform if it doesn't serve me, right? Social media is about interactions. It's about communicating with people. And it's not always just about a broadcast. So I enjoy interactions on Twitter and Instagram. And on Snapchat, there just wasn't the interaction that I thought was, was, would make sense for me. Uh, question, are your secrets of building a good Twitter following? Yes, engagement drives engagement. Okay, there's a lot of people that think that just being on Twitter, look at my hair, it's rocking right now. <laughs> uh, the thing is that you can't just be on Twitter. Having a personal brand and growing your Twitter is about being active and striking com conversations, right? I always like to say the more you talk, the less people listen, and the less you talk, the more people ask questions. So here's one hack for, uh, for, for, for Twitter. Ask a question, right? The other day I asked a question, what's the difference between bunnies and rabbits? And I had a whole fun conversation with people. Another great way to grow your following on Twitter is to know exactly what you're talking about. The more focused you are on a single content, people will want to get that content. Also, tweet chats. If you haven't heard of tweet chats or done tweet chats, tweet chats are awesome. It's a great way to build community on Twitter. Uh, check out every Wednesday at 11 a.m., Winnie Sun. Hashtag Winnie Sun has a great Twitter chat. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, we have, I heard you spoke, you speak last week, OC Tech Happy Hour on personal branding. Uh, to help launch your company. Tell more about it. So I, <laughs> I wanted to build my personal brand, but I had no idea how to do it. And so what I tried to do is, uh, and I wasn't good at social media at all. You look, a couple years ago, I had no social media presence at all. I started Twitter in 2008, and I tweeted four times, and I got rid of it. I, I'm more of a personal 
person. I like to talk with people. I'm more of an interactive, offline type of person. But I knew that I needed to get serious about being online. So I actually I made a conscious effort to learn. And how do you learn? You learn the people who have done it. So I was connected with Leonard Kim uh, at a, a networking party at Keith Rossi's house, who's an amazing author and, and a great networking king and a, and a guru that I was like, I was able to get to his house for this party. And I met Leonard, and he's got over 10 million views on his content. He knows, like, I respect him and what he's doing on social media. So I literally said, I need help learning how to write better, because you're obviously doing it. And so we started talking and in conversations. He said, Ryan, if you could build your personal brand, like, what is step one? And I was like, well, I'd want to know how to do this. What's step two? I'd want to know how to do this. And in this conversation, because he's so close to the information, what happened is that we use it as an opportunity for me to pretty much do everything that he said, and it worked. It continues to work. And so what we did is we had so many people that were asking us how it works, just like you, like how do you build your personal brand, we put it into a comprehensive online course because my time is, I can't give my time to everybody. So we put together a 52-piece course, uh, seven lessons where you only get one spot per week, and it's the format that I've been using, and it's, it's a really cool format. The one thing you need to understand about a personal brand, it takes time. You have to invest yourself. There's no light switch that you turn on. It's not about where I am today. It's about the journey. And if you look, it's not like I all of a sudden popped up out of nowhere. I've been hustling and grinding for a long time. I've been hungry for a long time. And it's that consistent effort. Gary Vee talks about that all the time. You can't worry about your followers. You've got to worry about where you're going. And if people like where you're going, they're going to follow you. So you can check out influencetree.com. Uh, if you check out my pinned tweet, on Twitter. Uh, I've got an interview with me and Leonard on top 10 Twitter tips. It's a tongue twister, but it's good. Uh, so that's my answer for that. I, I met Leonard. I wanted to learn how to my, build my personal brand. I asked him for advice. I did everything that he said, and I continue to learn. So that's what's exciting about the personal brand. Let's see, next question from Tradecraft. What are three books you would recommend to any entrepreneur? Number one is Tim Ferriss and The 4-Hour Workweek. I read that book every single year, okay? The second book I always recommend is How to Win Friends and Influence People. That is a timeless classic. And then for a third, I would say Keith Ferrazzi's Never Eat Alone. It's a masterful piece on how to build your network because you're as strong as your network is, and that's really the case. Okay, let's see. I caught you at Social Media World last year. Uh, can Snapchat be hacked yet? You know what? If you steal somebody's phone and you do a hijack, that's the best way. I'll be at an event and somebody will give me their phone and say, hey, can you hijack my Snapchat? And that's the only way that I'm on Snapchat is that type of a hijack. Um, hacked? I can't particularly let you know whether it's able to be hacked. I, I ran Snapchat for a while and then I stopped seeing because Instagram <laughs> stole the functionality of Snaps and so that created the functionality for me to do that. Number three personal branding influencers you follow and why? So number one is Leonard Kim. And what impresses me about him is that he's just sort of, don't take this the wrong way, he, he pretty much failed at everything over and over as an entrepreneur like we all do. Uh, but he got sick and tired of being sick and tired and he started explaining how he was feeling in written form. And what's exciting about that is that you don't have to be some fancy pants anybody. He was just real. And he talks about you can be an example of uh, what to be and what not to be. So he was the example of what not to be because he didn't have these successes. And so I really respect him as a person, as a friend, and a personal branding expert. The other person I would say is Dennis Yu, Y Yu. And I say that because uh, I've been able to be mentored by him. He, he is the Facebook master. Uh, he has a dollar a day Facebook strategy, which is amazing. You should check that out. And then third, um, I would say from a personal branding expert, um, there's a lot of them out there, but somebody I really respect is Gary Vee. I mean, he's just no bull beep, and uh, he speaks it like it is. He gives away as much information as possible, and he leaves it up to you uh, in order to, to make the decision for yourself to do it. There's no silver bullet for personal branding. There is a silver bullet for public speaking, and the best way you can become a better public speaker is to speak more. The best way you can be a better writer is to write more. The best way you can be a better hockey player <laughs> is to play more hockey. You've got to realize that communication and social media, it's all a contact sport. If, if you try to shortcut it, you're shortcutting yourself. All right, let's go to another question here. Hey, Ryan, 
Thanks for doing this. We're a college entrepreneurship group in California State University, Fullerton. Yeah, local. Uh, we were wondering what your best advice for college students who are trying to, i got to see more, trying to uh, manage starting a business, going to school, and having a job. <laughs> okay, here's the simple skinny to it. Sleep, eat, and drink water. I I'm serious. I give that advice all the time. The other one piece of advice I can give that trumps everything is to smile more. <laughs> like a genuine smile. Be excited about what you're doing. Because, look, I manage a full-time position at the University of California, Irvine. And I also run a startup. And I'm also listening to books and educating myself and reading. And the one thing that you have to do as a baseline is stay healthy. I was talking with Peter Polydor. I was interviewing him for Richtopia recently. And I asked him a similar question. I said, you know, what is, a, what is something that, that keeps you successful? And he said, sleep. Because here's what he said. If you have all the stress and anxiety in your day as a student, starting your own business, you know, having a job, all these things, inside of your dome, inside of your brain, behind this big killer 10-foot overhead wave that's rocking on my hair right now, inside your brain, all kinds of toxins are formulated throughout the day when you have all the stress. And if you go to bed, they clear themselves. But if you don't go to bed and you're the type of student that stays up for another uh, three in the morning and then all of a sudden you wake up early and you think that it's more effective for you to invest your time, think again. Because there's this thing called the 80-20 rule and it's not as easy as inputs equal outputs. If you haven't heard of the 80-20 principle, it's fantastic. But the concept is, and from a student perspective, think about this. You would think that if I study this much, then I'm going to do well on the test. But that's not the case. You can study a lot, and you can be very poor on your tests. The trick is that if you study effectively, and you study at the right time, and you're in the right mental state, you can do really good with spending less time studying. The average person only works a couple hours a day, even though they sit at their desk for eight hours. It's, it's, a, it's a ratio that happens in nature and everywhere. Basically, it's the 80-20 principle. So that, I'm going to guess, you hang out with 80% uh, of your friends 20% of the time. In customer service, 80% of the problems are caused by 20% of the people. So the advice is, get to the basics. Get good sleep, drink lots of water, stay healthy, and then you can run at an optimal level. Like, I charge. I'm a ginger, but I charge all the time. And I drink a lot of water, and I stay healthy, and that's the number one piece of advice that I can give, aside from smiling. Okay, let's see. Um, love your radio show. What type of guests are you looking to still interview? Awesome. Uh, if you do not know about Get Notified, you should check it out. It, it is a lot of fun, and it's on KUCI every Wednesday morning from 8 to 9 a.m. Yes, people are looking at me funny. I'm doing a Facebook Live. You can say hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, and like today, I had uh, the founder and CEO of Heal, the Heal app, like the Uber for doctors. It was rad. We had a lot of fun. But I'm always looking for people that know more than me, and that's pretty much anybody. I like to tie in what typically wouldn't be conversations around social media and bring them into social media. So if you are curious about getting on my show or you just want to join, I'm even famous for people contacting me and saying, Ryan, can I just sit in on your show? Guess what? I go, yeah. So Spawned, if you want to check it out, shoot me an email, ryan at ryanbone.com and join the show. I, I'm famous for having multiple people on the show. And you can see all of my shows at getnotified.kuci. Dot org. And secretly, that just points to ryanfolan.com forward slash talk. All right. What's the easiest social media growth hack for people to implement today? Well, I'm going to go a little bit differently here because I believe that social media platforms are not just your typical, uh, your, your typical you know, Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. The easiest social media growth okay, is to get people to value your content or see your content as valuable. The most underutilized website out there right now, which you can call social media if you want, is Quora. Q-U-O-R-A. The thing is that oftentimes people will blog or they'll, they'll write their thoughts on their WordPress site and they get no views because no views, they're there. If you go to Quora, it's a question and answer database where somebody asks a question and then millions of people might follow that question. So answer that question. And then it's just like Reddit, where the, the popular answers go up. It's a great place to start. Personally, I need to do more Quora, but that is the, the quickest social media hack. And then the best social media hack is know why the hell you're on social media. <laughs> I swear, more people come up to me and they ask for social media hacks, or how do I do this, how do I do this? I look at them and I go, why are you on social media? 
And oftentimes people can't explain that. Don't be on social media to be on social media. Be on social media for a specific reason. Know the why, right? What do you want people to do? Like, I can help you build an audience, but it doesn't make sense unless you know where to point them. So one, the quickest is going to be go to Quora answering questions. The most effective is figure out why the hell you're on social media in the first place. And I'm not on my face. I'm not on my personal Facebook social media because it's just distracting to me, and, and I'd rather invest the time elsewhere. All right, let's see. What are some of the skills that you learned uh, that you are learning right now? Okay, mindfulness. This is what I'm working on. The power of being present. Oftentimes, as an entrepreneur, you're like, oh my gosh, shiny object over here and shiny object over here, and you get all like, just you get scrambled. There's a great book I just read called The Practicing Mind. And it's by a piano tunist, a guy that works on a piano. And the, the main concept, right? I mean, for me, I do yoga. I try to center myself. Uh, I'm working on the meditation thing. But what I'm trying to do right now is be more mindful. And the power about being mindful is that you can slow down and actually get things done faster. Believe it or not, if you're mindful of what you're doing, like we're always thinking, oh, crap, what happened in the past? Oh, my gosh, what's happening later? So many people don't live in the present, and your days become more enjoyable, um, your life becomes more fulfilling, and it's, it's amazing. So practicing mindfulness is the one thing that I'm working on today. All right, Youngry, what are your three favorite TED Talks? Number one, Joshua 4, F-O-U-R, I believe, and it's the Memory Palace. Joshua 4, the Memory Palace. It's crazy. He talks about one of the most ancient, effective ways of giving speeches. Don't memorize your speech. Prepare and improvise. The concept of this memory palace has been used for thousands of years, and it's a fascinating, fascinating talk. The guy goes to cover a uh, championship of uh, a, a memory, a, a, world, a world championship of memory, a memorization. And he's so fascinated, he spends the next year practicing, comes back, wins the whole damn thing. Uh, it's fantastic. Number two is how to not get chased by a bear by Ryan Volan. I really enjoyed that talk because I think that there are bears everywhere. But I developed an app, and if you haven't seen my TEDx talk yet, just type in Ryan Volan, TEDx, bear, whatever it is, and that would be the case. And then I think that um, my third favorite TED talk, or TEDx talk, because I, I sort of lumped them in together, uh, would have to be, I have a few, so that's, I'm going to get back to you on that one. I do like the Tony Robbins, although it's a little bit out of character for him. Um, oh, just for you, Ash, uh, your, your TEDx talk. The, check out Ash's TEDx talk. Okay, uh, what are the three books that have changed the way you think uh, that have helped your business? So somebody asked me earlier, I'm going to give three other books. Uh, Gary Vee has a great book called The Giving Economy. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, that helps to change the way that you're looking at social media, not as a selfish thing, but as something out there into the world. Okay? Um, there's another book called The Happiness Hypothesis, which is actually pretty interesting. You should check that out. It's more of a mentality thing. Uh, and then Pitch Anything. Pitch Anything by Oren Clef. Oh, my gosh. Oren Clef. Namaste. You are the man. Oren Clef, Pitch Anything, probably one of the best pitch books besides my 313 book, which is coming out soon. So there you go, Lorenzo. Did you ever have stage fright, AK fear public speaking? How did you overcome it? I still get anxiety when I go on stage, no matter what, and we all do. It's a reaction of your brain. But I have a trick for that. It's called the pre-stage sway. So your body knows you're going to go up on stage, so you get nervous. You start to sweat, and then your foot, when you get on stage, starts to go like this, and you're like, oh my gosh. So the trick is, find a place where it's private, I'm going to extend, the, I'm going to give you a live demonstration here, okay, on my selfie stick. Okay, so you're there, and you're about to speak, and so you're like all nervous. The trick is to let the nervousness flow through you, just like emotions, right? Don't let emotions, like don't stop and deal with emotions. Let the emotions flow through you. If you're really mad, like be mad, and then feel better about it. The same thing goes for speaking. So before I go on stage, I literally will start to, to move around and, and do this kind of thing and, and get my legs going and get all funky and get the neck and the head and even the face and scrunch and uh, And then you stop for a second. I may look a little bit more red than normal, but I actually feel tingly. And what that does is it gets that nervous energy out of your body so that when you get up onto stage, 
you've already processed that energy. Uh, I wrote about that recently on Interesting Engineering. Uh, you should check that out. It's, it's a fun one. It's called The Pre-Stage Sway. And my buddy Daniel Mitchenshort, a, a championship world speaker, competitor, he's my friend, my buddy, uh, he helped me out with that as a mentor early on. So <laughs> I actually feel a little bit more relaxed now that I did the pre-stage sway. That was a mid-stage sway. All right. Uh, what is the essential items to have in your investor money pitch document? Okay. I deal with a lot of people in their pitches, and I have this thing called the 313, which is really basically saying that there's only three important parts. It's the problem you're solving, okay, the solution, and your market. And I put those together in what I call a 313 sandwich, because the most important thing you can have in a pitch document is a story. Okay? So forget about financials real quick. You've got to connect with your audience. So the structure that I help people with is you start with a story. That uncovers the actual problem that you're feeling, or that, that's discovered. Then that leads to the solution, and the solution leads to the specific market, because you're not, you're, your thing is not for everyone. And then you finish with a story that ties in a different situation than the story in the beginning. It's called the 313 sandwich, and I'll write about it more later, but I, I speak a lot on that. Uh, let's see, Vincent, what's up? What's up next for your brand building? You're an MC, public speaker, and now social media guru. I don't think I'm a social media guru. I'm still learning. Radio host, etc. How do you grow from here? My goal for 2017 is international speaking. I got to speak in Portugal last year. It was a phenomenal experience. And this year I've decided to, one, stay off of my personal Facebook, except for this, this occasion, and two, speak internationally. I do a lot of stick figure drawing, right? If you look at a stick figure drawing on my Instagram from the other day, it says, you know, know what you need help with. And this is probably the single most powerful thing I can leave everyone with today. The fact is that I'll ask people all the time, what do you need the most help with? And they don't know what to say. They don't know what they need help with. So I need help with getting international speaking gigs. When people reach out to me on Twitter and they're like, hey, what's up? How can I help you out? I'm looking to speak internationally. As a result of that, we're just into March. In the last two months, I have solid leads on speaking in China. I'm putting together a proposal for a personal branding workshop in Dubai. And I've got a connection in Australia and uh, Poland. So just because I know what I want, but that's it. For me, it's, that's the next level, is speaking internationally. And then I'm going to make sure to take the love of my life with me, have them fly me out there first class, stay out there for a week, and then do the big road show, and then come back home. So for me, it's international. Uh, that's what I'm excited about. And Leonard Kim and I are working on a book. Uh, so keep that in works. We were in New York. We've got a book agent. Uh, it's all exciting stuff. Okay, uh, what benefits do you get from yoga? <laughs> we wish more entrepreneurs. Yes, uh, don't get mad. Do yoga. Don't get stressed out, do yoga. And a shout out to Mix Yoga over on Bristol. They're actually UCI students, fantastic science, uh, scientists. We're all women, and they've got a great studio. But, you know, I grew up doing karate because I got bullied as a kid. Don't bully people. I'm bullying you to not bully people. Uh, and martial arts gave me that confidence, and I love martial arts, okay? But the thing is that you've got to have this yin and yang. And so yoga for me is amazing. First of all, this ginger is not very flexible. Like, I can't even touch my toes, right? <laughs> but it's a, it's a time during the day that I take for myself. And I do yoga at lunch a lot, okay? So just like you choose to spend an hour on your blog or just like you choose to do your social media updates, you have to choose to find time for yourself. And this gets back to the question about what's my advice for entrepreneurs that are young and they're doing a job and they're doing a startup and they're going to school. Stay healthy. A healthy mind and a healthy body leads to a healthy business. That maybe is another stick figure quote that I'll do. So if you haven't done yoga, like go to a class that's for free. Everybody has free classes. Uh, once you get over the fact that your arms are over your head and you're doing the namaste and the bowing, it's phenomenal what it does for your body. You have joints in your body that hold stress. And if you don't stretch them out, you're going to retain that stress. So yoga is a way to put your stress back out into the world. All right, question, uh, you've helped many early stage entrepreneurs. One project I recently found out about was UCI Esports Center, uh, specifically Mark Deppi. Tell us about the experience when it was an idea formation. <laughs> this is a good one. So you can talk to Mark. Uh, he's a great guy. We do soda loops all the time. We're connected. And, and I was at the Entrepreneur Center. And he comes in, and he's like, yeah, so I've kind of got this idea. And I treated him like anybody else. And I started asking him questions. And I put him on the spot. 
And the best way I help people is to have them help themselves, okay? So here's a line of questioning. Somebody will at one point say, here's my idea. Is this a good idea? And then you say, uh, I'm not sure. Do you think it's a good idea? And they go, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then you go, well, what would make you think it's a good idea? Like, who is this for? Well, it's for these people and that people. And you start to engage in a conversation where they are the ones answering their own questions that they came for. It's called Socratic. It's a Socratic method of consulting. And I really pushed him to keep digging in on this idea. And half of the battle of a successful idea is believing that it can happen. And it was a big idea. But I believed in him for him, just like I believe in you for you. If you're really ready to chase after it, then go for it. But you've got to continue to believe that can happen. He did something that's unheard of. He created an entire eat sports program, first at the major research university. And I was fortunately there along with him with the entire route. And I would say that persistence in believing in the fact that it can happen is a huge part of success for any entrepreneur. Because you are your worst critic. Shh. Listen. Listen for a second. You hear that? That's the voice in your own head that's telling you you can't do it. Tell him to shut up. Tell her to shut up. Tell it to shut up. Because we are our own worst nightmares. And as soon as you start to think that it can't happen, guess what? It's going to happen because that's evolution. Talk about communication. Maybe this is the last little nugget here. Thoughts create words. Words create action. Action creates reality. So whatever you first think is then manifested by your language machine into words, and then that helps you to then actually make that happen into the real world. So if you think good thoughts, you use the right words, you have a better chance of being successful than somebody who is talking down to themselves. So I help Mark stay positive and believe the dream and then just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So that was his story. I'm super stoked on what's going on. And it's over that way, up the stairs. Uh, check it out. All right, what does youngry mean to you? Uh, it means somebody doesn't know how to spell young. <laughs> I'm a bad speller, so I respect that. But for me, uh, I mean, I think the young part of it, I think we're all kind of young at heart. In this last TEDx talk that I gave at, uh, at, here at UCI, I said, no, ma no matter what you want to be when you grow up, even if you're grown up, social media can help you get there. And I think that for me, youngry is a young state of mind because I don't want older people not to think that they're young. It's, it's really a young at heart. And how do you have a young heart? You're healthy. You drink water. You sleep. You get to those basics. People ask me how I have so much energy. I attribute it to my gingerness, yes, but it's about like that core basic health. And it's just about being excited. Like I wake up, I'm stoked. Like I have a very fulfilling uh, and very busy and crazy life. But for me, I'm young, I'm hungry, and so the, the merge of those two words, I'm younger, yeah, I'm very younger, although I don't eat as much as I should, which is somewhat of a challenge. Okay, well, it looks like the flurry of questions have stopped, so hopefully you guys got some good information out of that. Uh, I'd encourage you to check out my startup, Influence Tree. That's influencetree.com. Uh, we can help you grow your influence. And if you want to find me and about me, go to ryanfolan.com. Uh, if you want my favorite platform, and you want to see me action on Twitter, go to Ryan Folan. That's at Ryan Folan on Twitter. And then Instagram. If you want to see my daily drawing quotes, uh, just go to Instagram, and it's at Ryan.Folan. So think again. Twitter is at Ryan Folan, and Instagram, where I do my Sharpie drawing, is Ryan.Folan with a Sharpie marker right there. All right. Well, thank you, Ash. Uh, word to the wise. Tech problems always happen, but you got to push through them. You say, what the tech? Let me figure out how to make it happen. So I jumped on my personal Facebook, which, is, uh, which I sort of broke my own rule for the year, but I don't count this as really being me on personal Facebook because it's on the Youngry Facebook. And I'm here to support the Youngry. Check them out, all kinds of good stuff. We'll see you at the OC Tech Happy Hour. Uh, consume all the content that you can out there. Life is about learning, and education is a learning experience. All right, amen, guys. And do some yoga and drink some water. And I'm going to use this next finger to hit the, the button. And don't forget to smile. Yay!